Okay, so we have a MIDI instrument and we don't have any MIDI clips right now. Now, one big difference between the audio clips and the MIDI clips, in order for me to have an audio clip, I have to actually bring some audio content into an audio track. To create a MIDI clip, I don't necessarily need to actually start recording any MIDI notes. I can actually just double click into one of these blank clip slots. And just like that, I have a blank MIDI clip. Now I'm gonna expand the clip view here. And really quickly, you'll notice on the left side of the clip here, left side of my MIDI clip, we have a little piano roll. That's what this represents. And as I scroll up and down, we can see as my mouse uh, hovers over different notes, it's telling me the note name on the left side of my mouse. Now, if I hover over this area here where the note range is actually at, my mouse changes into a magnifying glass. I can click and hold and I can either drag to the right to zoom in on the note range or drag to the left to zoom out. So I can see all the possible notes at once. Now, this clip is blank. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that the audio track is not gonna play any content. I'll hit my stop button here. And I don't need to see my sends or my returns. So I'm gonna go ahead and hide those by hitting the send hide button over here and also the return button right there. All right. So if I play this clip, we see there's a playhead moving through the clip and I don't hear anything. That's because there's no notes inside of this clip. Above my piano roll, there's a little headphone icon here. And this uh, uh, will allow me to preview any notes that I happen to click on the piano roll. Okay, now I didn't record any of that stuff. I'm simply previewing those notes by clicking on it with my mouse. And I'm only able to do that when this headphone, this preview button is enabled. If I take that off, when I click on the notes, I don't hear anything. Now, if I wanna be able to record into a clip, there's a couple different ways I can start to place notes in here. I have my computer keyboard acting as a MIDI controller. And as I'm playing notes, I can see the notes uh, get highlighted on the piano roll here. If I was to record inside of this clip, right now this clip is playing by itself. If I was to hit a circle button here, when this track is not armed, the empty clip slots have squares, and these are stop buttons. If I hit the record button, those squares turn into circles, and this means that I can start recording into a new clip slot. So for example, if I was to hit record, and then start playing some notes here, and then I hit this button again, I've recorded a clip. Not a very good one, but it's a clip nonetheless. And I can see the notes here. And below the notes, I can see the velocity. Playing the computer keyboard, it's not a velocity sensitive instrument, so every note that I play is gonna be the same velocity, essentially the same loudness, okay? Now that's one way to uh, get content into a clip. Another way we could do that, let me go ahead and just delete this clip by selecting it and pressing delete. Another way we could do this is by simply drawing the notes into a clip. All right, so again, these are very distinct differences from the audio clip. Uh, I could either double click, let me go ahead and just play the clip, my blank clip. I can either double click anywhere inside of this clip so I see the notes horizontally. And then again, I'm looking at a timeline with these numbers up here. So I can place the notes at a specific point inside of this one bar loop. Again, we see loop. The loop starts at the beginning of the first bar and it is a one bar loop. So if I double click here where it says C2, I just placed a note in there and this note lines up with the grid. If we look over here on the right side of our MIDI clip, and this is true with any clip, uh, audio or MIDI, right here it's telling us what the grid resolution is. So basically each line inside of this clip represents a 16th note. So if I double click to place a note in there, it's gonna be a 16th note long. So I can record in real time, or I can simply place the notes in here by doing this. I can also extend the length of these notes by hovering my mouse at the end and making it longer. I can select a note and use my arrow keys to move it up to the left, to the right, or down. And the same way we were able to duplicate clips, we can also duplicate notes. If I select this note, 
Again, my shortcut to duplicate is Command D. Can duplicate that a few times. Then select the individual notes and then move them where I want them to go. And again, this isn't like the most awesome creation, but it's demonstrating the point that when we're working with MIDI clips, uh, they're a lot more malleable. There's a lot more that we can do to manipulate these clips as opposed to the audio clips because we have control over each individual note as well as the velocity of the notes, all right? So down here, if I adjust this, this can make the note either louder or quieter depending on how velocity sensitive the instrument is. And we'll get into adjusting those parameters when we dive more into the instruments, but most of the virtual instruments you load are velocity sensitive to some degree. And as I adjust the velocities here, we can see the notes are changing color depending on how velocity sensitive uh, or how loud or soft, how high or low the velocity of that individual note is. So we can hear these two notes are quieter than the other notes that have a higher velocity. So playing around with velocity uh, allows us to create something that feels a bit more human and not quite as stiff or repetitive uh, with all the notes being hit at the exact, exact same volume. Now, if we look to the left of the MIDI clip, uh, we have some properties here. Some of them look similar, some of them look different. Uh, we have the start and end point, our loop point. The loop is enabled right now. Right now I have a one bar clip. And let's say maybe I like this one bar melody, but I think that if I made it twice as long, I'd do something different in the second bar. Well, I can take this one bar clip and I have the option to duplicate the loop by pressing this. And now that one bar loop has become a two bar loop. Now I can do something totally different in the second bar. Let's say maybe I don't have an idea of what I wanna do, uh, but I want to maybe rearrange the order of these notes in some way. I don't wanna add more notes, I just wanna kinda play with what's here. Well, I can highlight a selection by simply clicking and holding with my mouse and drawing a little box around a group of notes here. And if I go back to my MIDI clip preferences, my MIDI clip properties, I should say, I have the option to reverse the placement of these notes or to invert the placement of these notes. So by doing this, let's go ahead and invert that. I've taken those same notes, but I've essentially kind of flipped them upside down and let's hear the result of this. Now, that's interesting, but I don't know if I'm like in love with that. So I'm gonna undo what I just did. I'll use Command Z as my shortcut. And again, you can always find undo in the edit menu as well. Now, instead of inverting those, let's go ahead and just reverse the placement of these notes. Now that I actually like, I think that's pretty cool. Now I can also take these notes. These notes have been selected. And let's say maybe I wanna transpose them up or down an octave. So it'll play the same notes, but just either at a higher or lower pitch. A very easy way to do this is once these notes are selected, I can hold shift on my keyboard and then either press down to go down an octave or up to go up an octave. So I'm holding shift, I'll press down. I'd like to see all these notes at once. So I'm gonna go over here to the left of the piano roll click and hold and drag to the left so I can basically zoom out vertically. Very cool. One more thing I'll point out before I move on because I want to leave some of this for later. Got to leave some suspense. If I select all these notes, again, I'm inside of my clip, Command A, if I select all of these, another very interesting option is uh, Legato, which is right here in our MIDI clip properties. If I use legato, it's gonna make it so that every note is going to play until there's another note that plays. So each note will extend until we get to the next note. So let me play this one more time. And if I hit legato, so that could be pretty cool. Now I'm gonna go ahead and undo that because what I'd like to do is just keep reinforcing some of these things I've been talking about. Each track can only play one clip at a time. And this may seem like a limitation, but it's actually a very powerful feature because it allows you to take certain ideas 
and slightly tweak and manipulate and morph them so you can build a song that's evolving and has variety and isn't just a bunch of static loops. So a good example of that when we're dealing with MIDI. I can take this MIDI clip, I will duplicate it using Command D, and in the second clip, this one, I will use legato on all the notes. So I'm selecting all the notes, I will hit legato, there we go. So if I play the first clip, there's no legato here. Go to the second clip. We have our longer notes, go back to the first one. Okay, so now we have two different MIDI clips with some slight variation going on. We've been able to use the MIDI clip properties to take a very basic melody uh, and add on to it, duplicate the loop, rearrange the timing of some of these notes. Uh, so that's pretty good.